Good evening and welcome to this week, a weekly news of your program. I'm your host, Tamar Gambatu. And for our top stories for this week, we have Irtenburun Hydroelectric Power Plant Construction to resume in March 2022. 2.9 million doses of vaccines are available in Mongolia. Fourth wave of COVID-19 expected to peak by the first half of February. And for the news, stay tuned. Mongolian energy resources such as coal, solar power and wind power are considered sufficient to supply power to Central Asia, but the country still buys electricity from its two neighbors due to the lack of energy infrastructure. Industry analysts say there is an urgent need to implement large energy projects such as the country's hydroelectric power plant project. The Tumburu Hydroelectric Power Plant's construction work is expected to resume this spring. According to preliminary studies, around 258 households will be affected by the construction of the hydroelectric power plant. According to the project agreement, construction work will take six months. The government has decided to spend around 10 billion Mongolian turuk on relocation and compensation for people affected by power plant's construction. We conducted a survey of households affected by the construction and one-time compensation. Even though Mongolia has very poor experience with relocation and compensation procedures related to major infrastructure projects, we should negotiate it with local residents and conduct this task within the legal framework. Construction of the 90-megawatt Irtenburung hydroelectric power plant is set to begin this spring, pursuant to an agreement between Mongolia and China. Despite being stalled for many years due to external and internal factors, the project is seen as crucial for Mongolia's energy independence and significant for ensuring long-term energy supply to the western provinces. The number of electricity consumers in Mongolia has seen an average annual increase of 7 to 8 percent, and domestic energy production has risen by 6 to 7 percent annually in recent years. The central power grid reached peak demand of 1,308 megawatts on December 14, 2020. The state pays an annual 15 billion Mongolian turuk to import energy for the western region. If domestic energy projects are intensified and promptly implemented, Analysts say Mongolia could put this money into domestic circulation instead of sending it abroad. We think that this project will be a notable example of how renewable energy sources can be transformed into electricity and how we can use this to cover the growing demand for energy. We should not lose this opportunity. This project will determine whether or not Mongolia can fully cover its local demand through domestic production. We should create our own national electricity grid and reduce our dependence on energy imports. Within the new economic recovery policy, the electricity and energy sectors will be given high priority in the near future. With the commissioning of the Irtenburung hydroelectric power plant, the western region will be able to use energy that is 7 to 10 times cheaper than the current high-priced energy imported from Russia and China. The state spends 8 billion to 16 billion Mongolian turuk a year on providing energy to the western region. Mongolia has the potential to become an agricultural and dairy product exporter. However, according to recent studies, Mongolia imports up to 80% of its cheese. Even though Mongolia has the potential to produce raw materials and develop industries such as cheese production, there are some policy setbacks that prevent local producers from engaging in these businesses. It's said that a country with an agricultural sector can develop its own cheese production. We have the potential and resources to produce products for export. That means there are some mistakes in the government policies being implemented. For example, there should be some policies implemented regarding custom tax. If imported products are cheaper than locally produced products that include value-added taxes, then it's difficult to boost local production. Uh. Experts note that if policies are designed to protect local producers and create local market demand, local producers will get the boost they need to create less expensive, high-quality products. This kind of policy support would not only create new jobs, but would also allow SMEs to expand their business and benefit from soft loans from SMEs.
SMEs account for 17.8% of Mongolia's GDP and produce 2% of Mongolian exports. Although some local producers are benefiting from soft loan programs, there is also a need to protect the local market. Experts note that in order to protect the country's domestic market, some limits should be placed on imported goods. Both Mongolian epic songs are considered a significant genre of Mongolia's intangible heritage. Scholars say that only 200 epic songs have been preserved today. We talk to Mongolian study scholars and an epic song singer to learn more about this wonderful heritage. This is Batarchao, a Mongolian Tul singer. Before singing an epic song, the singer offers a tribute to Mother Nature as a sign of respect for all creatures. People say that an epic singer lives from the infinity to another. Batarchao says that only a few epic singers know these customs and traditions nowadays. We differentiate different generations of Tul singers by their place of origin. For example, singers from Alta Oranja are considered singers of the fourth generation, while those from Bayalta to the south in Hojurt are considered ninth and tenth generation. Our Oranja people have two different techniques for singing, the Horjung and Shahmat vocal methods. These two different methods allow us to sing for a long time. Mongolian epic songs are about the daily lives of nomadic people. The songs that are sung during difficult times, such as war, a pandemic, or natural disaster, are different from songs sung during calm, peaceful times. Singers call these two groups of songs severe epics and soft epics. Soft epics include songs such as Bayin Tsarang and Ayril Tsarang Mongolian studies researchers note that some epic songs should be sung according to strict etiquette and rituals. Some severe songs were supposed to be sung in a gear without a fire and with the ton, the oil-shaped crown of the wooden structure of the Mongolian gear closed. This is an example of the strict and unique rituals followed during epic song singing. Few nations have an intangible heritage like epic songs, fewer than 10. Mongolia is one of the major representatives of Tol culture. As we look back on history, epic song singing is preserved in two types of countries. One is countries with ancient civilizations and the other is countries that were empires in the past. I know a man who promotes this culture to the younger generation in North Province. I think a special program should be implemented to preserve and promote this ancient culture. Scholars say there were 500 to 700 Mongolian epic songs. However, only around 200 have been preserved and are known today. These songs depict many aspects of nomadic life, including shamanism, animism, religion and the nomadic way of life and can contain a few hundred to several thousand lines. Scholars note that epic songs are an example of the strength and authenticity of Mongolian culture and traditions. With daily number of COVID-19 cases rising and confirmed cases of the highly transmissible Omicron variant, Minister of Health in Hwast issued a statement and asked people to maintain infection prevention measures. The number of cases confirmed on a daily basis has had a tendency to grow. Notably, over the weekend we recorded more than 1,000 cases. In Olambata city around 600 to 700 and in the provinces 200 to 300 cases were confirmed. Some provinces like Bayanghongra and Urhanga recorded more than 50 cases. We expect that this number will grow in the future. We have connected this growing number of cases to the recent holidays, knowing that many people travel to see their families during the holidays. Looking at the number of imported and domestic cases of Omicron, we assume that a fourth wave of COVID-19 is starting in Mongolia. According to our team of scientists, the peak of the fourth wave of infection will fall in the end of January and the first half of February 2022. Even though the number of COVID-19 cases is growing day by day, according to studies conducted internationally, the Omicron variant has slightly milder symptoms compared to the Delta variant. Our diagnostic and surveillance team conducted a comparative analysis of symptoms in people infected with the Omicron variant. Around 96% of the patients has mild symptoms and the remaining 4% had severe symptoms. As the peak of the COVID-19 wave will coincide with the flu season, medical institutions will pay extra attention to high-risk groups whose health conditions are likely to deteriorate quickly, such as pregnant women, seniors and children.
Ulaanbaatar city's traffic light system is set to undergo major changes. As a result, officials say that traffic congestion is expected to decrease by at least 20%. Few systematic reforms have been made since 2010, when the Ulaanbaatar Traffic Control Center was established, which has resulted in traffic control issues. As some traffic lights are manually controlled, there have been complications with managing high-volume rush hour traffic. There's a software that allows 88 of the 155 traffic lights in Ulaanbaatar to be connected and exchange information. It comes with the risk of malfunctions. If that happens, traffic lights won't work properly. In addition to the traffic light system upgrade, a smart parking system will be introduced. The new system will make it possible for traffic lights to automatically change in response to traffic volume. Preliminary studies show that doing so would decrease traffic congestion by 20 percent, especially traffic at intersections. Studies show that Ulaanbaatar residents spend around 2.5 hours a day in traffic congestion, which adds up to 35 days a year. The cost of economic opportunities lost as a result of heavy traffic is estimated to be 2.7 trillion Mongolian Tugruk. That's why city officials have been working to fight traffic congestion. A budget of 20 million US dollars has been approved to upgrade the city's traffic light system. Mongolian makeup artist Erun Zaya became the first gold medalist in the OMC Hair World Creative Neon Makeup Championship. The Creative Neon Makeup category was added for the first time to the 2021 OMC Hair World International Championship. Erun Zaya has been working as a professional makeup artist for nine years and has successfully gained worldwide recognition. She earned degrees in theater, stage and TV makeup from schools in South Korea and Taiwan and is one of the founders of Diva Beauty Academy. This look made her the winner in the Creative Neon Makeup category at OMC Hair World 2021. This look featuring three neon colors took Erun Zaya nearly four hours to complete. For this championship, compared to previous years, I had much less time to prepare. Prior to the day of the competition, I hadn't slept for 72 hours. I was experimenting with neon makeup to finalize which look I'd create for the competition. Also, I was fortunate enough to work with a wonderful team. My model was Miss World Mongolia 2014, but stick. This was a team effort. Having a great model and a great photographer is what you need to succeed. Over 3,000 artists from 50 countries participated in 2021's OMC Hair World, which is also called the Beauty Olympics. Arun Zaya first competed in the championship in 2019 in the bridal makeup category and ended up in the top 15. Arun Zaya has also been a judge for international competitions. She says she is grateful that her many years of hard work have paid off. I find this victory to be a sign that I should do much more in the future. This is just the beginning for me. I want to develop the beauty industry in Mongolia and prepare new artists who can keep up with the rest of the world in this industry. When we first founded Diva Beauty Academy, we had to come up with a slogan. We decided on, we will bring Mongolia's makeup art development to the international level. We were quite nervous about what other artists would say about our slogan. But when we accomplish things like this, we are proud of keeping our promises and reaching our goals in real life. In addition to being a makeup artist, Arun Zaya also runs Air Yoga Center, introducing the benefits of practicing Air Yoga to others. The gold medal makeup artist says that consistency and having faith in yourself can make your dreams come true. And she encourages the youth to keep chasing after their dreams. In recent days, more than 1,000 COVID-19 infections have been reported per day in Mongolia due to the New Year's celebrations. On Friday, the first 12 imported cases of the Omicron variant were confirmed. The National Emergency Commission of Mongolia called its meeting on the COVID-19 situation in the country and gave instructions to relevant officials on the improvement of the home treatment of COVID-19. 
The fourth wave of COVID-19 in Mongolia is expected to peak in late January or early February, according to the Minister of Health, Ingbolt. The country with just over 3 million people has so far registered more than 395,000 COVID-19 cases with 2,000 related deaths. So far, 66.5% of the total population has received two COVID-19 vaccine doses, while more than 936,000 people aged over 18 have received a third dose. More than 2,000 Mongolians have taken a fourth dose after the country started offering one from Friday on a voluntary basis. Meanwhile, the National Emergency Commission recommends that vaccinated people and people who are experiencing mild illness be treated at home as the hospital workload is likely to increase during the peak of the Omicron variant. It already announced that hospitals will pay special attention to the hospitalization of unvaccinated children, the elderly and pregnant women. According to preliminary studies, it is estimated that 18 to 20,000 daily cases may occur during the height of Omicron variant in Mongolia. Moreover, the National Emergency Commission urges elders, pregnant women and those who have not been vaccinated not to participate in public activities during the Omicron wave. Businesses and organizations are also recommended to take organizational measures internally, such as to change to remote work or work in shifts. Mongolia has a stock of about 2 million doses of Pfizer vaccine, about 600,000 doses of Sinopharm, and about 300,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines. Officials say that the current stock will be enough for administering third and fourth booster shots for around 3 million people of Mongolia. The World Health Organization advised that the vaccine is stored in the special freezer in around 60 to 90 degrees Celsius below zero. If it's stored properly, its shelf life can be extended by another three months. The Ministry of Health assures that the shelf life of the vaccines available in Mongolia is not expiring. Our country has enough reserves of 2.8 million doses of vaccine from Pfizer and Sinopharm. However, work is underway to study and import vaccines for children. In our country, decisions related to vaccination of children aged from 5 to 11 will be made soon. Children aged from 12 to 17 years also need to get booster shots. Children of 12 years old of age and older are also eligible for the booster shot. At this time, when the number of coronavirus cases is expected to rise sharply, experts say that additional doses can help prevent infection. During the predicted outbreak, the classroom courses of secondary schools will likely to begin. An international study has been conducted on vaccination of children aged 5 to 11 years old. Officials say that similar research is being conducted in our country as well. In the last several months, Mongolia ran out of medical equipment and drugs. But National Emergency Commission informed that the operation to withdraw some necessary medical equipment and drugs is being organized step by step. For example, the National Center for Infectious Diseases has a two to three month stockpile of three to four types of antiviral drugs, a one to five month stockpile of antibiotics, and one month stockpile of infusions and one to two month stockpile of other drugs. The National Emergency Commission and the Ministry of Health have instructed all health facilities to stockpile medicines and reagents for three months. There was an issue of accounts receivable with suppliers. However, by the end of the year, our center had paid off its debt of 2.2 billion MNT. After that, it is possible to make purchase and organize delivery. According to sources, public hospitals have a one to two month supply of medicines. At a time when the Omicron variant has been registered in our country, it is important for citizens to get additional immunization and to support their immunity. To date, 330 people in the provinces have been infected with COVID-19. These people are being treated locally. During the first wave of the pandemic, COVID-19 confirmed people from provinces were transferred to the capital city for treatment. However, with the enhanced capacity of local health facilities, it has become possible to treat COVID-19 locally. The Ministry of Health has conducted respective trainings to local doctors on treating the Omicron variant. Well, that's all for this week. We'll see you next week with more news and updates. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye.